Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the new Bell EDAT flies, upgrades are made to Jetpack, and Mad Mike's launch attempt goes wrong. Welcome back. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I'm your host, Sophie Herlock. Due to a media leak, Bell Helicopter has taken the wraps off an intriguing helicopter configuration. By marrying a Bell 429 to a quadcopter-style electric multi-rotor tail assembly, the Bell EDAT could offer exciting new capabilities and efficiencies to the already rugged 429 and other Bell airframes. The system has the potential to offer greater redundancy as well as better control effectiveness and minimize cost of operation. A fly-by-wire system manages the four electric ducted fans and their simple fixed pitch blades that comprise the tail rotor assembly while power is supplied via two separate Pratt & Whitney Canada PW207 turboshaft engines. Bell also claims it reduces noise pollution, carbon emissions, and operating costs. This system was installed on a Bell 429 demonstrator aircraft at Bell's facility in Mirabelle, Quebec, and began flight testing back on May 23rd last year. Around 25 flight hours have been logged so far, and the company is carefully expanding the flight test envelope. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. It's time for today's trip around the patch. NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine will be a speaker for an NAB show main stage session April 20th. This session will focus on the use of advanced media technology and documenting NASA's Artemis program targeting a return to the moon by 2024, sustainable exploration by 2028, and preparing for human exploration of Mars in the 2030s. The DOT will award $520.5 million in airport infrastructure grants to 287 airports in 41 states. With this announcement, the Trump administration has invested a historic $11.4 billion to more than 2,000 airports across the United States for safety and infrastructure improvements since January of 2017. NASA is making progress on the road to first flight for the agency's first all-electric X-plane and first piloted X-plane in two decades, the X-57 Maxwell. Currently in its first configuration as an all-electric aircraft, called Mod 2, X-57 underwent a series of structural ground tests, giving engineers a look at the vehicle's predicted characteristics during flight. In addition to testing the X-57's cruise motor controllers, similar ground vibration testing took place on the wing and fuselage. The Kuwaiti parliament established a committee to investigate whether the government's purchase of Airbus aircraft involved alleged corruption. Kuwait is one of several governments to look into the acquisition of Airbus aircraft after the plane maker reached a $4 billion settlement with the United States, Britain, and France over allegations of bribery and corruption going back more than 10 years. The three-member committee is charged with reviewing Airbus orders and submitting findings to the National Assembly within three months. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. When the sport aviation world was introduced to Jetman inventor Eve Rossi, he showed the world what could happen when you strapped a few small hobby jet engines to a wing and put them on a skydiver. Recently, things have taken on a whole new aspect with the continued development of the Jetman program 
to incorporate more powerful engines and a control system. Highlighted at Skydive Dubai, the most recent iteration of the Jetman program was demonstrated with Jetman pilot Vince Raffet taking off while standing on a runway in the United Arab Emirates and eventually transitioning to a climbing flight profile that resulted in a gain of nearly 6,000 feet. In the course of the flight, Raffet demonstrated a number of hovers, turns, and various controlled flight maneuvers. Using a series of manually controlled thrust vectoring nozzles on the engine, the maneuverability is aggressive and Refit even did a series of rolls and loops before shutting it all down and returning via the parachute system attached to the Jetman harness. Over the weekend, amateur rocket enthusiast Mad Mike Hughes was killed in a launch attempt. The flight was targeted for 5,000 feet in order to prepare the steam-powered single-engine rocket vehicle for eventual flight to 60 miles of altitude and across the Kármán line. In video of the launch, there appears to be an accident parachute deployment very early in the launch, followed by the destruction of the chute during the early seconds of powered flight, and the vehicle reaching the apex of its powered flight, followed by a vertical descent to impact with no sign of additional or reserve parachute system. The impact was fatal, and the FAA notes this was not an authorized flight. Hughes was allegedly engaged in these efforts in order to prove the theory of the Earth being flat, while the Science Channel filmed it all for a series entitled Homemade Astronauts. And that wraps up our show for today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. For more aviation and aerospace news any time of the day, head over to aero-news.net. I hope you had a great start to your week, and I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, 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 oh,